and give us eternal life. That we all have sins, you know, like sadness is sin because the Bible says, you know, whatever that is not our faith is sin. So sadness is not trusting in God or anger or divorce or marriage problems or uh, pride or despise of people or love of money or uh, words that hurt people. Uh, that when we say words that are harmful, that hurts other people or pride or gossip or laziness or lust all these are sins and anything that is not good is sin anything that is not perfect you know when when we cannot love God perfectly and love people as ourselves that is sin so everyone has sin everyone is unclean and the wages of sin is death that uh, Romans 3 23 for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God so all have sinned and we are short of the glory of God. We cannot show the glory of God because of our sins. And Jeremiah 17, 17, 9, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. So heart is very wicked above all things. And Romans 6, 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So the wages, when we sin, then the price we get is, is uh, death. Is eternal death in hell but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord that from now on we have eternal life that God lives in us that we have a personal relationship with God that we are blessed by God forever now and forever and also Jesus had given us an exchange he has given us his righteousness and we get uh, uh, and then he get our sin now this is what 2 Corinthians 5 21 says for he has here is God God made Jesus Christ who knew no sin to be sin for us Jesus knew no sin he has committed no sin that he became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him so this is a wonderful exchange that our sins is passed unto him all the sins of all the people passed unto him so he became like sin his whole person was sin on the cross and then his righteousness righteousness means ob obedience of all the commandments of God that he has perfect righteousness he is perfect and this perfect righteousness is passed on to us that we become his righteousness that we have this righteous robe that will shine like Jesus in front of God you know, when we trust in Jesus as our Savior, we'll shine like Jesus. We'll, uh, we, we'll be glorious and beautiful and perfect like Jesus in the sight of God. Now, of course, when we're saved, when God lives in us, then we'll change. Our life will change. And then uh, when we change, then we'll obey God and love God and serve God. So, but first we're given the, the, uh, the gift of the righteousness of Christ that we are we become like Christ in the sight of God and then Galatians 3 13 Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law having become a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree so Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law so we don't have to fear any curse anymore when we trust in Jesus and have a living relationship with God, then we have no more curse, that God will not curse us, nor can anyone curse us. Now, there are people who believe in a generation curse, that they said that, well, um, when the parents and the grandparents have sinned, and then God will, you know, uh, pursue after the, the sin uh, uh, for third, uh, third and fourth generation. But then, the Bible says what? The Bible says that, but for those who love Him, that He will show His love for thousands of generations. So, if a person loves God and have a living relationship with God, you know, everyone who has a living relationship with, with God would love God. Because if a person doesn't love God at all, that means he's not born again. When a person is born again, then he would have love for God. And then, and then you know, uh, he would be blessed by God. Now, of course, if a person lives in sin, uh, he can be attacked by uh, the, 
the devils, by the, uh, by the demons. So we want to trust in Jesus as our Savior, and also we want to live a holy life. Whenever we sin, we ask God to forgive us, and then we try our best to overcome the sins, and then God is very happy with us, and then He'll protect us from any kind of curse. So we don't have to fear any kind of curse. And then uh, Jesus Christ has become a curse. So on the cross, He has become sin, and He has become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Now in the Old Testament already, it prophesied that that whoever is hanged on a tree, and uh, at that time, there was no crucifixion yet. But yet God inspired Moses to write that. Curses is everyone who hangs on a tree. So that already was in, a, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, to prophesy that one day Jesus will be hanging on a tree because the, uh, the poles of the cross is from a tree. So he was hanged on a tree. So he became... Jesus became sin for us and He became a curse for us. And then when we confess our sin, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So when we confess our sins, then He'll forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Psalm 51, 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, this, O God, you will not despise. So if we have a contrite heart and say, Lord, I'm really, really sorry for my sins. I, I'm sorry for my sin. I'm sorry that I've sinned against you. And then God is very, very happy. And then God will forgive us. So uh, when we have this contrite heart, this heart that is sorry for his sins, and God will f follow his promises to forgive, as a light bulb obeys the light switch. So when you turn on the lights, the light bulb will always uh, give out lights. So the light bulb will follow the principle of, the ele of electricity. And God will follow His own promises. That He promises that when we confess our sin, He'll forgive us. Then when we confess our sin and really repent of our sin and, and want to turn away from our sin, then God will forgive us. And then John 1.12 but as many as received Him, to them He gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in His name. So when we believe in Jesus, believe in His name, it means receiving Him. Receiving Him into our hearts. Receiving Him to be our Savior. Then we have eternal life. Then we are children of God. So uh, when we believe in Jesus, then we receive Him. We let Him come into our heart. He is our King. He is our, our Lord. He is our Master. He will give us eternal life. So, um, so uh, we can be sure that we can be saved when we trust in Jesus as a Savior and receive Him. So it also tells us that believing in Jesus is not just in the head. It's receiving Him. Let Him come into our heart to be our King, our Lord. And then when we repent, the whole heaven rejoices over us. Luke 15, 7. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. So if one person, one sinner repents, the whole heaven will rejoice. And here is a short sinner's prayer that you can uh, pray with the people that you bring them to Jesus. That if we sincerely pray this prayer, sincerely repent repent of our sins and trust in Jesus as our Savior, then we'll have eternal life. So, dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Jesus, for dying for our sins. Please forgive my sins. I have not sincerely worshipped and obeyed you. Please give me eternal life. I'm willing to love, obey, and serve you. I praise you and love you, Heavenly Father. I love you and thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this is a simple prayer. And here is a prayer that will list out some of the sins. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. I'm sorry that I have disobeyed you. I have told lies. I have hurt people's feelings. I have gossiped. I have greed and lust. Please forgive my sins and give me eternal life. I accept you as my God and my Savior. 
I love you, I adore you and worship you. I want to obey and follow you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So basically, we're leading people to thank God for sending Jesus to die for us and then we ask God to forgive us and give us eternal life and then, uh, and then we're willing to follow Jesus and love Jesus, love God and we praise God and thank God. So basically it's uh, thank God for sending Jesus to die for us and confess our sin and ask God to forgive us and then we're willing to follow Jesus, follow God and we praise God and thank God. Okay, and then also we can ask people, would you like me to lay hand on you and pray for you? The Bible says that we can experience God's work when, uh, when we lay hand on people. And, uh, and now, some people, they, they don't need someone to lay hand on them and they can, ex and they can experience God. Uh, but laying on, on of hands uh, can bring the work of God easier. That more people experience God's work by laying on of hands. Mark 16, 18, they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So that can bring healing. Acts 28, 8, Paul went in to him and prayed and he laid his hand on him and healed him. And then Acts 8, 17, then they lay hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. So there is healing in laying of hands and they also can receive the Holy Spirit and experience peace, love, joy, uh, and, and uh, that uh, we can experience love of God, power of God, healing, and demons driven out. So we can ask them. Uh, so if you like to, for me to lay hands on you, and would you like me to lay hands on you and then pray for you? Lay hand, lay, laying on of hands can help people to experience God and His nature. So when we lay hands on people, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit and lay hands on people, they can experience peace, the burdens go away, and love, joy, power. And it can bring inner healing and better sleep. So they can have uh, inner healing of their, of their emotions, of their soul, and they can sleep better and can bring health and healing. And let people experience how real God is and help people to build up relationship with God. So it, laying on of hands can help people to experience God, to experience how real God is. And it will build up relationships. So every time they pray, they can experience the peace again. They can experience the presence of God, the joy, the power again uh, when they have an open heart to trust in God. And then also it will revive their spiritual life. So, so we can ask them, are you willing uh, that I lay hand on you? And then we ask them to relax and think of God and love God with all the soul. And then, and then we, uh, we ourselves pray to God for a strong presence. And we need to learn to love God more so that we can experience God more. When we experience God more, and then we can pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit. And then we need to tell people after that uh, we believe in Jesus, what we should do to follow God and be blessed. Now, just believing in Jesus is not the end. It's just the beginning. And uh, so what should we do? After you believe in Jesus, what you should do to have a good relationship with God. First, pray many times a day to repent of all sins, trust in God's forgiveness, thank and love God, and believe that God is pleased when we pray to Him sincerely. So pray many times a day sincerely, and say, God, I am sorry for my sins, so repent of all sins and trust in God's forgiveness. Lord, you have promised to forgive me. Please forgive me and give me eternal life, and thank God, and love God, and believe that God is pleased when we pray to Him sincerely. So when we come to Him, when we come close to God, God will come close to us, so that we have confidence. When we sincerely pray to God, God will for sure come to us. Then we can be happy. God is coming to me. When I pray to Him sincerely, He will come to me. I can enjoy Him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You respond to my prayer. Thank you. Your peace comes to me. Thank you, Lord. Your presence comes to me. Your joy comes to me. You take away my burdens. Thank you, Jesus. You are so real, so real. So the first is pray many times a day and open a heart. And then read and meditate on and apply the Bible. So uh, we, uh, we should uh, read the Bible to understand, to know more about God and know His promises. There are many promises in the Bible. We hold on to these promises and we can be blessed. 
and then go to church to know God and worship God. That we should go to church to worship God together and in church also we can serve God. That God uh, tell us all to serve one another, to uh, do good things to one another and then God will remember and reward us. And then obey God and tell people about, uh, so obeying God includes telling people about Jesus. So after we believe in Jesus, we want to obey Him and tell people about Jesus. And that is uh, the will of God. That, and also when we are saved, are born again, then the Holy Spirit will live inside us to motivate us to love God, to obey God, to have a close relationship with God. And when people don't have a close relationship with God, they don't have the strength from God. And they can gradually uh, fall apart, fall away from God. So we should keep this relationship. And then we can be blessed by God. Your whole life can be blessed by God. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. So when we love God, when we honor God, when we praise God, when we obey Him, so that is loving God. Loving God means we, we, we delight in Him, we like God, we thank God, we appreciate God, we have a close relationship with God, we pray to God, and we obey God, and we serve God. So these are, uh, these are ways that we love God. And when we love God, then God prepares for us things that eye has not seen, that human eye has not seen, the ear has, uh, that has not heard, nor has entered into the heart of man. You know, one day we go to heaven and say, wow, this is so beautiful. It's something we never imagined, never have seen such beautiful things. And, uh, and also in this life also, we can experience great blessings from God. And, get, and then Matthew 6, 33, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Seek the kingdom of God means we want more people to be saved. We, we bring the gospel to more people. So that's first meaning of seeking the kingdom of God. And second is, let God be the king in our hearts. Then His kingdom comes in our heart. Because where Jesus is the king, there is His kingdom. So we let God be the king in our heart, in our home, in our church, in our place of work, and wherever we go, we let God be the King. Then we are seeking the Kingdom of God and His righteousness. We need the righteous robe of Christ. The, the robe of Christ, His righteousness is clothed unto us when we trust in Jesus as our Savior. And also we also seek uh, the righteousness of the saints, that we obey God and the righteousness that, uh, that uh, we have, that we obey God and serve God. This righteousness will stay on us forever. And then when we seek the God's kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to us. And then how to be blessed by God. Uh, Luke eleven twenty eight. 28, Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. So when we obey God, then we'll be blessed by God. And then delight in God. Psalm 37, 4, Delight yourself also in the Lord and He shall give you the desire of, the, of your heart. And I, also Isaiah 58, 14, Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills on, of the earth. So when we delight ourselves in the Lord, He will give us the desire of our heart. So uh, that when we say, Wow, God is so good, I delight in you, I like you. Then, God will give us the desires of our heart. Now, how can we like God? We, first, we can think of the things God has created for us. You know, the food, I like the food. I like the Creator who created the food. I like the body that God has created for me. I like God. I like, and then I like the work of uh, the Holy Spirit living in me, changing my life. I love Jesus who died for me so that I can have eternal life. And then the Holy Spirit continued to guide us and give us strength and peace and love and joy and has a wonderful plan for our life. And thank God for that. I like God because He has a wonderful plan for my life. And He provides for me. And He gives me spiritual gifts. He gives me strength. He gives me everything I need. He provides for me. And then one day I can go to heaven. So all these things will say, 
Lord, I like you. I like you. You know, for me, every day I, I said to the Lord, I like you. I like you. I like you very much. I delight in you. You are the delight of my heart. You are so good, so good. Everything you do is so wonderful. The work of the Holy Spirit is in me is so beautiful. Your presence is so beautiful. Your joy is so beautiful. Your strength is so beautiful. And I appreciate all this. So I delight in God all the time. When we delight in God all the time, then God will bless our whole life. So this is how we are saved, we're born again, and then we are blessed by God. And then the motivation to, to love God, to obey God, and serve God. Okay, these four points that we can tell people as soon as they believe in Jesus. First, God loves us greatly, and also He is almighty. He has all the power. And then we are precious to Him. He loves us, loves us very much. And then when we love Him, obey, and serve Him, we will be greatly blessed by God, and our lives will go to a high level. So when we love God, obey God, trust in Him, then He is very happy and will bless us. But if we don't love God and obey God, there will be destruction to our lives. And the worst scenario is that we can lose salvation. And we are saved by grace through faith, and faith must always produce good works. We are not saved by good works, but we are saved by grace, and then the, the faith will produce good works. So if a person doesn't love God at all and continues sin, there will always be destruction. Uh, now, if a person is saved, but then he continues sin, now and then he asks for forgiveness, there will still be destruction. Because when he hurts people, then people will hurt him. When he, you know, uh, have lust, it will hurt his marriage. It will hurt his heart so that he will lose his peace. It will hurt his relationship with God. So any sin will commit will destroy our relationship with people, relationship with God and our peace, and our plan, God's plan for us in our life. So whenever we sin, there's destruction. So whenever we sin, we say, God, please forgive me. And then help me to stop the sin as soon as I have the sinful thought. As soon as we have the sinful thought, immediately we say no. That's the key to, to uh, uh, overcoming sins. For instance, when we have any anger will say well the person has done something bad and then i get angry but it's his problem it's his problem it's not my problem if i get angry then i can lose the blessings of god i can lose the peace of god why should i get angry so i should not get angry i would just say i will bless the person i will just uh, uh pray for the person and i want to forgive the person because if I hate him, if I'm angry with him, it will hurt me. So that's how we handle it in our heart. And also we have compassion on a person. If a person is, you know, hurt people easily, that means they have been hurt by people many times. Therefore, they hurt other people. So we, we understand that people hurt other people. They hurt us because they've been hurt by people. So we understand that then we can have compassion on the person. And then we can take care of their anger. Or if we have lust, we'll say the lust will destroy our relationship with God and with people and, and destroy our family and also it will hurt our hearts, hurt our peace. So I, I want to stop that lust. You know, when we see a sexy lady, immediately we'll stop it. We don't want to look at her. We, uh, or we can just look at a person, the wo woman as a person, not as a sex object and just respect the person. That, that is something you need to learn. You look at a beautiful woman, a sexy woman, and still don't have lust. If you cannot control your lust, then turn away and don't look at her. So we understand that sins are destructive. So we stop sinning, and then when we stop sinning, then, then uh, God is very happy, and God will bless us. Now, sometimes people say, well, I still have some sins. Then you repent. And then when you repent and try to overcome the sin, God is very happy, even when we are not perfect, even when we still have sinful thoughts. And then we ask God to forgive and stop the sinful thought. Then God is happy. So it's actually it's natural for people to have sinful thoughts. The point is we want to stop it immediately. And the more, the closer the relationship uh, that we have with God, then the less sinful thoughts we have. That if we praise God more, love God more, have joy of the Lord, then we have less sinful thoughts. And we can stop the sinful thoughts very 
quickly. So I hope that we all, you know, realize that when we love God, obey God, and serve God, and trust in Him, then we're blessed by God. So that is the motivation that that God is pleased with us. Then He'll raise us up to a high level and and help us to enter God's perfect plan. And also, God can give us peace and inner healing. That. He can give us peace all the time and every time I pray I can experience joy and the, the closer we are to God the more we experience Him. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28 Come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I'll give you rest. So when we come to God He will give us rest and Isaiah 61 1 He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to comfort all who mourn, the oil of glad a joy for mourning, the garments, garment of praise for the spirit of, of uh, heaviness. So when we come to God, the Holy Spirit will you know, heal the brokenhearted. The Holy Spirit will heal the brokenhearted. The more we pray to God, the more we'll be healed of our hurts in the past. And then we can have more joy when we trust in God and put down all the hurts and then, and then we say it doesn't matter that people hurt me. It doesn't matter. So th from the Bible, the necessary fruit of salvation. So first two are related to salvation because the first two are what we do when we trust in Jesus as our Savior. First, continue to repent of our sins and turn away from sins. That's the first thing we do, that the fruit of salvation. That means the result of salvation. When we are saved, when a person is born again, then he will have these six fruits. That first would be he repents and turns away from the sins. And then he will continue to trust in Jesus as Savior and Master. It's not just at the beginning, but all our lifetime we will trust in Jesus as our Savior. And then be related to relationship with God. That we have a close relationship with God. That he who abides in Jesus, he, Jesus will abide in him and he will bear much fruit. So we have a close relationship with Him and then He will stay in us. And then love God with all our hearts. That The Bible says that cursed is Him who does not love the Lord. So if we don't love God, then, uh, then the person can be cursed. So we love God with all our heart. And then related to good works, obey God, especially the Great Commission, to tell people about Jesus and to teach them to obey everything Jesus has taught us. And then, Serve God. Serve God means we glorify God and bless people in Jesus, uh, in Jesus' name in our daily life and in ministry. So we, uh, whenever, whatever we do to help people, to raise up their spiritual life, to help them spiritually, to pray for people, to be kind to people, all these are serving God. So these six points, I hope you remember, that's from the Bible. To repent of all sins, to trust in Jesus as Savior all the time and close relationship with God and love God and obey God and serve God. Now even when we bring someone to Jesus, we tell them, we continue to do this. And when you do this, and then you have joy and you enjoy God. And God has a wonderful plan in your life and He can lead you to a high level. So we can use this for evangelism and you can send this QR code. And then you can download it to your cell phone. Have this uh, PDF in your cell phone and then you can use it for evangelism. Okay, let's have a prayer and I want to pray for you to experience the Holy Spirit. When you open your heart and you stand up now, you can all stand up and, and trust in God as our Savior. Then the Holy Spirit can come to you and bless you and give you strength. And open your heart to hunger for God, to desire God. And God will come to you. Dear Heavenly Father, thank, thank you. We praise you and thank you. We love you. We adore you. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We need you. You are so wonderful. You love us so much. You created the whole world. You created us. And you sent Jesus to die for us so that we can have eternal life. Thank you, Jesus, for this, for this wonderful gift. And you send the Holy Spirit to stay in our heart, to work in our heart, to change our lives. Thank you, Lord Jesus, 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. We appreciate you. We love you. We adore you. We delight in you. We are happy because of you. We are happy because of God. Every good thing we have is from God. There is no good thing that is not from God. Every good thing is from God. Thank you, Jesus. We welcome Jesus. Welcome you, Holy Spirit. Come to bless us. Come and be with us. Come and bless us. Give us strength and give us joy and be with us. Help us to do evangelism, to help people to believe in Jesus, to help people to follow Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. We love you. We worship you. We adore you. We enjoy you. Ah, hallelujah. Now, you all can cry out to God like this, like, like letting go of all the burdens. Ah, hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And joy can come to your heart. You try to do that, okay? Cry to Jesus, letting go of all the burdens. Ah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, hallelujah. Mm -hmm.